Just before we delve into some of the highlights from 2023 and whittle down and show you guys my favorite top 10 images of last year, had a great year, had a fantastic year until unfortunately I lost my number one fan. My father passed away very sadly just three weeks before his 88th birthday, which uh, is on Christmas Day, incidentally. So as you can imagine, it was a bit of a somber time for us um, over the festive period. What a real shame. But my father being a real trooper that he is, or that he was, he wouldn't want me to um, moan and whinge and Life just goes on. Plus, he'll tell you himself he had a great 88 years, almost 88 years in Inns. So, I'll dedicate this video to you, Dad. Without further ado, let's throw ourselves into the PC. So my workflow is simply this. I just created a video that I duly called Best Landscape Images of 2023. I then went through each of the videos that I created throughout the year and I dragged and dropped images of note into them. Images that I thoroughly enjoyed making or that I thought were fairly decent images or images that were potential for my top 10 of the year. But there's a lot to go through, too many to go through and I don't want to drag this video on. So the best way I thought of dealing with this was to create a diary of events, which I have done. And now using that word briefly again, I'm going to briefly go through the diary of events and just show you some highlighted images and maybe the odd mm, interesting or funny story or two. As a side note, if we're viewing the images in bridge, then please note they are low res images and in post if i've got time i'll swap them for the high res images but you'll know either way right so in january interesting month uh, i do like getting out straight after christmas after the new year which i'm duly going to do as soon as this blasted cold disappears last year moss force waterfall cat bells lodor falls home fell and a road trip to wales so Moss Force Waterfall up in the Lake District, it was one of the first vlogs that I did. It was freezing cold, but it was an interesting one because there was a, a really steep hill up here and it was all ice covered with fresh snow. And we managed to drive the vans up to about this area here. And then we sat and watched so many people attempt to go up this ridiculously steep hill when clearly even where we were we just about managed to get there the van was slipping and we thought no enough is enough and then we managed to capture this footage <laughs> Quite amusing. I loved this waterfall. I loved this area. Arguably, I didn't get there during the best conditions, but hey ho, that's landscape photography for you. But there's four images that I'm fairly happy with. I actually think this was one of the first videos that I created of the year. I met up with uh, my pal Tony, Tony Pickard, and Tony and I walked up Cat Bells, but it was Tony's idea, I've got to give him credit for this, to actually stop at this point here and photograph up at Cat Bells and not go up to Cat Bells and photograph down. And I'm so glad that I did because when we, when we got there, the conditions were great, but then the skies just lit up. They just caught fire and the resulting images were absolutely brilliant. I mean, this image here, I think it's a fella up there talking to his dog. I'm not 100% sure, but really, really like that. Love those images and that pano was pretty much my favorite from the day. What a great, great day that was. Then we went on to Lodor Falls and this was my first time I'd ever been to Lodor Falls and it was okay, but my favorite images from this location because there wasn't that much water because of the said conditions. Then my favorite images were these abstract images. Again, thoroughly liked them. 
I especially loved that picture there and that would make for a cracking print. I've got a, a printing and framing video coming out. I might even choose that image. Mm, very, very nice indeed. What a cracking, cracking location. And there's a triptych of three of my favorite abstract images from that shoot. The Welsh road trip kicked off during a storm at Porthcawl. I've had this on my to-do list for such a long time, but you've got to get there during the right weathery conditions, but especially during a high tide, especially during a sunrise, and especially when there's gale force winds. And on this particular day, we had all three. This is uh, Nash Point. Uh, I'm gonna rush, brush through these because the day was terrible. If you've seen the video or if you wanna go back and watch the video, it absolutely chucked it down with rain and it was a lovely location. And these were pretty much the best images that I could capture, one, two, three. I captured more, but they were pretty much the best. All right, that's it. Enough about that. February, we went to a secret location and photographed some MIGs. Now this is interesting because I don't like mentioning stupid comments, but my last video of last year was of me photographing a secret waterfall in Glencoe. And I did say right at the start of the video that it's a secret location that I and I'm sure many other photographers have discovered but I said I wasn't going to give the location away and quite a few people didn't like that. But I also said in the video that anybody that frequents Glencoe or knows Glencoe well will know exactly where the waterfall is. If you want to do your due diligence, if you want to just check the B-roll, I offered you enough information. So if you wanted to go out your way and find it, you could have done. In actual fact, my pal Mally said to me, is the waterfall by here, by there, and just down there? And I said, yes, that's exactly where it is. And Mally said to me, do you know, I've never even been to Glencoe. I don't know where that waterfall is. So I don't know what the fuss is all about. But I don't think there's anything wrong with having a location that you're not prepared to give away. I mean, some guy even commented that because I've put myself in a public space, i.e. YouTube, I have a right to show the location to everybody else. But my thought process is this. If my channel was all about tuning vehicles and I've managed to tune the engine of my Vauxhall Vivaro to produce 200 miles per gallon. Because my channel is on YouTube and it's a public space, you guys have a right to know how I manage that. And I'm sorry, I'm just not buying that. And to be fair, I do give away pretty much all of my photography locations. Hmm. Yeah, so it's a bit of a strange one that actually. I couldn't get my head around that one, but I didn't want to argue because things were going on in my life, so I very quickly moved on. Having said that, in February we went to a disused airfield and using the power of off-camera flash I managed to produce these two images which I thought were pretty damn decent especially if you saw where these aircraft were. And now I've got another secret location just a minute after me saying that I didn't have any other secret locations to go to, how quick you forget. But this one, this one, this one, this one is one that I discovered from a book. So again, if you're prepared to do the same due diligence that I've done, then anybody can find these locations. But I quite like this video, it was really good. The Isle of Skye, the shipwreck that's not on the internet, and it's still not on the internet, apart from, I think, what I may have written about it. Hmm, okay. Now, what I loved about this video is not the images that I managed to create, because I didn't really capture many images at all. But having discovered it in a book, and then hunting it out, and eventually finding this rather incredible shipwreck, uh, that was pretty much it there. So what a great, great location this was in the Isle of Skye. Again, that's a fairly decent shipwreck. 
and for it not to be on the internet. So I thoroughly enjoyed that video and it, it did well. It was quite a successful video for me. And I got a few pictures there, but again, not really many standout images and certainly no images there that's gonna make my top 10, but an interesting video nonetheless. During this month, I captured a couple of nice images at Fortin Services. But then as part of my commercial work, I created a video of me photographing a Motown show because I thought some of you guys might be interested in some of the results. And these are just a few of the images that I thoroughly enjoy taking that I thought captured the moment really well. The color, the lighting, capturing pictures like this or in these conditions can be a little bit tricky, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I think that particular shot there was my favorite from this shoot. But yeah, great, great, great time. And I'm only showing you the highlighted images. I took so many on the day. What a great night that was. The video didn't do particularly well, but I thought I would create it anyway, just in case some of you guys were interested in how I go about photographing um, a commercial job like this. And lastly, in March, I spent two weeks up on Harris and Lewis creating a personal project of mine of which hasn't seen the light of day yet. So that's something I'm still working on. But I spent two weeks up there pretty much, pretty much taking pictures of every inch of the place. And I loved every second of it. Absolutely brilliant. My standout, not image, but my standout video was me hunting for a bothy. And that, believe it or not, is the bothy there on the right hand side. So difficult to find it's a real uh, it's a work of art in its in its own right it is incredible and for the first time ever i had a connection and i talk about this quite a bit in my videos i never have a connection me i just turn up it looks nice or it doesn't i take pictures and i walk away but in this video i ha i think it's because it was so difficult to find and i'd walked for so long and so far that I was absolutely banjacks and I found it and I just had a moment and I videoed that moment by all means if you want to go back and check that video out um, very um, very proud of that video even though it's a bit of a weird one to film yourself having a moment I've mentioned on numerous occasions about never feeling a connection I just don't get it I don't understand what that really means or I didn't until now. It, it's taken me two days to find this place. It doesn't show up on the OS maps. And it was a dog walker that just so happened to mention it to me a couple of years ago when I was here. And I just remembered it. I, I don't know if it's the, the chase, the hunt, and then the capture that has got me all excited. I don't really know. But more than that, more than that, it's, it's not a manufactured wooden hut on a mountain top. Somebody has spent so much time creating this and then blending it into the mountain top. And honestly, I, I just happened upon it. I could quite easily have walked past it and I'm sure many, many, many people have. I'll take some pictures on the inside. I'll take some pictures on the outside. And more importantly, I'll take some pictures of this and one of the nicest backgrounds, one of the nicest backdrops for photography as a landscape photographer that I've ever seen. I just need a minute. Loved every second of it, Harris and Lewis. Mm -mm -mm. In April, I had another road trip up to Scotland, talking of which I'm going there in 10 days time from now. 
Now, during the road trip, Gaz and I woke up nice and early and looked out of Gaz's kitchen window. This is the view from Gaz's kitchen window, by the way, and we saw this incredible cloud inversion. Now, just up the road from where Gary lives, they either build, mend, or repair oil rigs. So we thought, I wonder what the oil rigs would look like if they were peeping through the cloud inversion. So very quickly, we jumped into his vehicle and up we drove. And I've got to tell you, we managed to capture some incredible pictures. Now I videoed all of this, I created a vlog of all of this, but I've never released it for a good reason. I mean, before I explain the reason, take a look at this video that Gaz created with his drone. that that is incredible so I thought I can't wait to come back and create a video on this morning's uh, shoot so excited about it but when I was post processing the images I thought the images didn't quite look sharp enough and I'm not really a pixel peeper but I knew something wasn't quite right so I then zoomed in and as you can see, the edges of all of the straight lines are all a bit blurred. And I checked another picture and another picture and they were all exactly the same. Look at the edges down there. Now there's nothing wrong with the camera, nothing wrong with the lens. It was just purely to do with the atmosphere in the air. I was, we were shooting these from a long way off. I was using my 400 mil lens or 70 to 200 mil, depends on which picture you're looking at. But when you zoom in, especially on this picture here, you can clearly see it looks as if the camera had moved, but the shutter speeds were quite high. So that's definitely not the case. Now, Gaz said, well, that's really strange because he entered, I think it was this particular picture here, into competition and won the competition. He did really well with the picture anyway. I'm not sure if he won it, but he did really well with the picture. So I asked him to go and check his picture and he came back and said, blimey, he said, I didn't even realize it's exactly the same. And that's a real shame. I've got some incredible pictures, but unfortunately the atmosphere just spoiled the sharpness of the images, which is silly really. And therefore I'd never created a video around this morning shoot, and that's a real shame. And during the same road trip, we scouted out an incredible house to go and do a little bit of urbexing around. When I say incredible, I mean this house here was owned by, at the time, the richest man in the whole of the UK. And his partner at the time, I don't think it was his wife, his partner at the time, was Coco Chanel, the Coco Chanel. Coco Chanel was a designer and then a perfumerist. Is that a, a word, a perfumerist? Anyway, she was into her perfumes. Now, what you've got to remember is everything in the house originally was designed by Coco Chanel. Now, obviously the house has changed hands, I think a couple of times since she lived there. So I imagine the wallpaper that she designed, the carpets that she designed, probably weren't the original ones when we went there, but it's still incredibly romantic to walk around the vastness of this place, knowing that A, Coco Chanel lived there, and B, it was owned by the richest man in the whole of the UK. And I took some lovely pictures, really, really nice, like that wallpaper. The old bathroom, that's probably the original bathroom and Oh, I don't know, brilliant, absolutely fantastic. Here you could see there's a hole in the roof that's uh, emitting a bit of light, which those light rays coming through we thought were pretty cool. So Gaz and I actually picked up some furniture that was lying down on the floor. We tidied this area up just so that we could create this picture here. And we decided to add some lights later as well. And these lights that you can see in here were from my iPhone. We just took individual pictures and then blended them all together to create this picture. 
Mm, very nice. But the ballroom and the, oh, you can't even begin to imagine what it must have been like to live there, to wine and dine, to go there as a guest during a party or to, I, I don't know, at the time they would have had um, housemaids and butlers and oh, different worlds, different times. And we found this um, old newspaper from 1942. Beautiful, beautiful place, fantastic. Again, I've never created a video from it. Still got it in the bank, maybe I should. June was quite a busy month. I won't go through all of June, but Cosford Air Show, Berwick Lighthouse, Fine Art Photography at Holy Island. I'll show you some of those pictures. Street photography with Mally in Liverpool. Again, I <laughs> a bit of a story attached to that. I didn't create a video from it, but I got one or two nice pictures. Off camera flash with a skateboarder, a Somerset road trip to Amer. Yeah, tell you what, let's crack on and show you some of these pictures. I mean, hopefully this will just go to prove that, you know, I absolutely love taking pictures because I've never even created a video from this, but some of the pictures I got were quite nice. They're just your typical air show images, but either way, they were still nice pictures. Uh, yeah, and I had a thoroughly enjoyable day again with Tony and a few of the lads. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant time. Lovely, lovely pictures there. It's quite nice. My stand at one were those two, really. I think they were the French red arrows. I'm not particularly sure, though, the Belgique ones. I'm not sure. But either way, that picture there, not quite lined up. And that picture there were my standout images from the Cosford Air Show. One or two nice images from Berwick Lighthouse. And one of my favorite videos of the year was me creating some fine art images at Holy Island. Now the reason why this is one of my favorite vlogs is because I went to a very common location and captured very different pictures. It was also a bit silly doing what I did and also a, potentially life-threatening or Potentially, I could have looked ridiculous or stupid had I needed rescuing. <laughs> but I managed to capture these great, great pictures and convert them into my normal fine art style. And I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the day. And it just so happens that everything worked out well in my favor and I didn't need rescuing and nothing was life threatening. and. But that was more luck than judgment, I've got to tell you. But very, very, very much loved creating this video. It was all about the anticipation of the, the tide coming in, how far the tide would come up, would it engulf me? I mean, the premise of this video was for me to wait by this rescue platform here and wait for the incoming tide to come up and around the area of, like I say, the base of the rescue platform, enough so that I could create a long exposure, flatten all the water, and convert it to a fine art image, as you can see here. But of course, then with the incoming tide coming much higher, it meant that my rescue back to land would have been very precarious to say the least. But it was a very nerve wracking time creating that video. Only a couple of pictures to show you here. Street photography in Liverpool. I met up with Mally and basically the problem I've got with Mally is we just meet up and just gas. And we talked for so much or for so long this day that I really, <laughs> I captured I think two or three pictures. I've got a few more, but the only pictures I wanna share with you here these two pictures, this one and of this skateboarder. I love that one of the skateboarder. I thought it, was, thought it was really, really cool. Got my timing absolutely bang on there, especially as that light was starting to fade. So yeah, that was really good, but I've, it never came to a video, but that's just typical of when I meet up with Mally. <laughs> and finally, a road trip to Somerset where once again, everything went wrong. Tide heights, tide times, conditions were fine, but I got my tide heights and my tide times completely wrong. But thankfully, because I did, it forced me then to go off and look for other places. And I ended up coming to this place here, which I think is called Amer Cove. Maybe I've got it wrong. Maybe that's where I went to go. And it was the other cove that I, uh, I discovered, which was this one here. Anyway, 
Um, yeah, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this. So this is one of those accidental mistakes that turned out very well in my favor. In July, I traveled down to the Norwich area to grab some fine art images and also meet up with a very good friend of mine, Jack Appleton. Really, really enjoyed that. But before I met Jack, I grabbed these pictures here from, I think, Haysborough Beach. Thoroughly enjoyed this location. What a tremendous location. And I've certainly come away with quite a few images that I'm very proud of. Very, very proud. Loved, loved all of the, I loved my time down there. I loved all of the locations I visited. And I think I've come away with some really, really nice images. Very, very nice. And then while I was down there, I met up with a guy called Jack. Jack Appleton is a local photographer in the area. His work is outstanding. I did a, a little bit of an interview with him as well. So if you want to go back over my old catalog and look for that, I would suggest you do because he's, if you don't already follow Jack, then you need to follow Jack. But again, I took some, I think some cracking fine art images while I was there. And on top of that, I then looked up a picture that Jack showed me and the premise of the video that I created with him was I was I tried to recreate his work and then show you guys how I go about trying to take a different stance on the same location how I would try and make my pictures different if I was to try and you know, copy a photographer's work not copy per se but we all have inspirations but I explained this whole scenario much better in the video. Might want to go back and check that out, but certainly consider subscribing to Jack if you're not already a subscriber. While I was down there, obviously I wanted to photograph Haysborough Lighthouse. I've seen so many gorgeous pictures from this area and it always looks much better when there is a crop in the farmer's field. I mean, now if you go there, there's probably some just very short grasses and it won't look quite as nice. Then, this local artist turned up and when she was painting the lighthouse, I thought how cool it would be if I videoed the artist painting the lighthouse and use her as a foreground interest. And the picture turned out like that. I was blown away. Absolutely incredible. That's Helen, I think. And Helen has subsequently asked me if I would give her permission to paint this picture here, which obviously I duly obliged. What a great picture. Loved this area, Haysborough Lighthouse. Go there in July or when there's a big crop up. Really nice, beautiful, beautiful location. Then to round up July, I met a guy, went to his hide where he has or he runs workshops with jumping squirrels and posing squirrels and a reflection pool. And even though the whole thing is staged, I don't care. It's such a great opportunity to go there and photograph these rare animals, especially under conditions like these. So I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that day out. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And I'm definitely, definitely going back. I might even run a workshop here. Hmm, hmm, watch this space. What a great day that was, awesome. September started off in a very interesting way. Nikon contacted me and asked me if I'd like to borrow their Z8 and a few lenses. The Z8 at that time was very difficult to get hold of, so naturally I obliged. We're in January, by the way, and I've still got the gear. <laughs> now, because my time with this camera was going to be limited, I very quickly organized a mini road trip up to the Lake District, visiting Elterwater, Lingmore Fell, and some woodland photography with my good old pal Mally. Elterwater turned up, place looked incredible. So this is me breaking my landscape photography Elterwater virginity up in the Lake District. Never been here before and it was brilliant. The place was stunning, but it was made even better when the sun broke through the low lying mist and I managed to capture that picture there. Absolutely gorgeous. I've got a few more decent pictures from the said location as well. Really, really love the location, especially under those conditions. Incredible. 
Follow that by a very early morning trip up Lingmore Fell. We got very excited going up here, by the way, because we knew it was very misty in the morning and we were hoping it was a low-lying cloud. Therefore, by the time we got up to Lingmore Fell, we were hoping we would then be looking down onto a cloud inversion. And we weren't wrong. It was incredible, except the clouds were moving so much that that low-lying cloud or the cloud inversion started to rise very quickly and I didn't manage to get many good pictures that is certainly a really nice picture and on the way down I managed to capture a picture of a herdy with that incredible background and the wife likes that picture so as far as I'm concerned that wasn't a wasted trip at all next I went to one of Mally's favorite locations in the Lake District to capture a few woodland images thoroughly enjoyed making this video we had a real blast I've gone through and down to the left yeah. and shot across because you see the fallen birch yeah there's a collection on this side here yeah well I've just I've walked so it's around nothing like what you've you know my, my man was obviously better back then thoroughly enjoyed it again all of these videos all of my back catalogue please feel free to go back and check it out in October I went back down to Haysborough Beach uh, running a couple of Nissy days thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed the Nissy days really really enjoyed that met a whole bunch of good guys both days I run two days both days were sold out and the conditions thankfully were so conducive to fine art style of photography so everybody come away with some brilliant pictures really really did like that i've already shown you the pictures so i won't show them again and next back up in scotland glencoe and the isle of sky run a couple of workshops up there and got some quite nice pictures i'll show you them in a second but before then i went down armed with the one to 400 mil lens and the z8 down to the mac loop and for the first time using this camera thoroughly enjoyed using it and i took some incredible pictures and I've got a bit of a, a story attached to one picture that I took and that is this particular picture here now I'm not a lover of what I call nasal hair photography I'd rather take a picture and show a subject in its environment but this particular shot I got in nice and tight and I got even tighter than that when I showed this picture off in the video the pilot and co-pilot then contacted me asking if I would give up this file so that they can print it and hang it at the RAF base and obviously I said yes because ex-RAF myself super excited when I did that they then came back and said we'd like to offer you a tour of the RAF base and to meet these guys in uh, in person of which I duly obliged but then things happened uh, in my life unfortunately as I mentioned at the beginning of this video and uh, that's still on the cards but I haven't gone through with uh, their very kind invitation just yet but nonetheless an excellent trip down at the Mac Loop once again and I took some brilliant 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 pictures pictures I'm very very happy with very very happy loved it loved it loved it during the Isle of Sky workshop I never vlog when I run workshops I just don't because I think it's a bit rude but I've got one or two interesting pictures I thought you guys might enjoy watching yes the old man stole we know that Algol absolutely incredible that is a bit of a classic shot but when I took it the conditions were just perfect so again I just thought I'd show you that picture uh, again look at those conditions very rarely do you ever get conditions like this in the Isle of Skye and I've only photographed the old man of store um, from this far back using the reflection as foreground interest half a dozen or so times so it is quite rare and also I thought you might be interested to see this this was a bit of a throwaway picture at the time because I mentioned that oh look the moon is out right in the middle of the day and look how incredible the moon looks so I donned the 1 to 400 mil lens, obviously still hand holding it, and I zoomed in and I took this rather incredible picture. Now, to be fair, I have obviously cropped in a bit more, but the files produced by the Z8 are so cool that there was no degradation of file quality of, at all. And to photograph the moon during the day and come up with a picture like that, I was quite happy with. So I just thought I'd share that picture with you guys as well. And again, just a couple of more pictures 
that we captured from the Isle of Skye and some nice woodland images to boot. So I quite enjoyed that, that was good. And just rounding up October, after the workshop had finished, I stayed for a day or two just to create a, a video or two. And I created this video, the, again, this was me demonstrating how to go to a very popular location and make it your own, because I can almost guarantee that not that none of you, or hardly any of you, would have taken a picture like this. If you think you've taken this picture, look very closely, because that there is not the normal waterfall that people photograph at this said location. So I, current, I kind of enjoyed making this video it's great to challenge yourself and again this is the normal waterfall so just as a heads up this is a normal waterfall and it was this waterfall up here that i used in the foreground as as solitary interest as opposed to what you can see here the highlights for me in november were an isle of sky workshop again i won't show you any more pictures from the isle of sky because i'm sure you're sick of them by now but also i visited an incredible woodlands in derby very happy with the images that I captured from this particular woodland. Even though the conditions weren't brilliant, there wasn't a misty morning, but it didn't really matter. I captured some what I think, uh, or what I believe to be uh, really nice pictures. I think this one here being my favorite, or that one there, one of the two. And yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That's only a couple of months back. So again, if you wanna go back and check that video out, if you haven't already seen it, then I would urge you to do so. And finally on to December, Workshop in Glencoe. I will show you one or two pictures from that particular trip because the conditions were very, very tasty indeed. And the secret waterfall, that's the video we mentioned early on. So that's interesting as well. So pretty much all the mornings were like this. The grass was white where it was just so cold, it was biting cold and the conditions were so icy. All the lochers, as, as you can see there, were all iced over and the conditions were incredible. I mean, look at that for a panoramic shot, just beautiful. This particular shot here, I crawled out onto the ice. Now the ice was thick enough to take my weight, but the water was probably only about two or three feet deep at the deepest point. So I wouldn't have drowned even if I went through the ice. So it wasn't really dangerous a shot to have captured. But it is a little bit nerve wracking at the time when you're taking it. Anyway, I took that picture there, thought it's brilliant. This rock here and this ice here forms a fantastic complement to the buccal in the background. It's a shame the buccal isn't snow capped, but it uh, didn't really matter. It was fine. This fella here, a bit of an interesting story attached to this because we were feeding this guy and when this uh, stag wanted more food he dropped his antlers down like this and it, it nicked one of the attendees eye uh, 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 faces there so had a bit of a cut and he had to go and get that uh, addressed and had to go and get it seen to but uh, yeah a bit of a black eye but uh, yeah that nasty thing there beautiful absolutely gorgeous but the conditions were fantastic I mean look at that you've got a small loch in there that's all frozen over and all of the frozen grass is there in the foreground that particular shot there is my favorite because that is just a wonderful wonderful shot and it was brilliant all the time that we were there this is rannoch moor and it just so happens that one of the attendees kind of found this composition so he called me over and said i like this do you like this it's really good and we managed to fine tune it so we just isolated these three rocks in the foreground again with Rannick Moore in the background and it's just brilliant the colors you could just feel the cold uh, as you're looking at that image and I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it yeah so a few shots from Glen Co and then finally on to my last vlog of last year which was a secret that's not so secret waterfall that I had a hard job getting to in Glencoe and that's the one I've left the comments on there but uh, some of the comments are, are not very savory at all because they thought I was bang out of order by finding or discovering something that took a lot of effort to do by the way and not sharing it with the world I still don't understand that so that's my year in a nutshell now what I'm going to do is show you my top 10 images they're going to be in no particular order except for three two and one so I'll show you 
I think it's seven or eight images first, and then I'll show you my third, second, and favorite image of the year. So on to my top 10, there's actually 11, I'll go through them in a second. Just outside the top 10, but I do want to mention this particular picture because this picture will forever hold a space in my heart because I loved taking this picture here. This is in Harris and Lewis. And this is the picture I mentioned earlier on when I was in search of, it took me two days to find this place, by the way, in search of this Bothian. When I did find it, the place was like a work of art. Honestly, it's like a building that I had never seen before, incredibly constructed. And I do urge you to go back and have a look at that video. Just look for one that says uh, in search of the Bothy or something uh, in Harris and Lewis. In 10th position, I'm gonna choose this one because again, it holds a place very close to me because I photographed this is down at the Mac Loop. I've just explained about this picture um, with the pilot contacting me and all the rest of it. So that, you know, that's brilliant. I love that. And of course, overall, it's a nice picture, even though I'm an advocate of taking pictures from a distance and not what I call nasal hair photography or close up. But it just so happens that I was wrong in this case and it proved out to be uh, really fine. Okay, again, these are in no particular order, but they're just outside my top three. This one, as I mentioned earlier, looking up at cat bells brilliant loved taking that picture this one down in the norwich area real fine art image absolutely incredible and again the conditions were terrible terrible for this but i've come away with a picture that i am very very happy with this was my first outing i think with uh, the z8 that i've got on loan from nikon and again Beautiful, beautiful conditions, and it's a lovely, lovely picture. Love it. Woodlands in Derby. Out of all the pictures I took in the Woodlands, this is my favourite. And I can't wait to go back here on a foggy morning because I love that location. I mean, what's not to like about that location? Incredible. Imagine that under better conditions. This one, again, I mentioned it earlier. Up at Glencoe and... I just love the, the, the muted blue cold colors that is evident throughout this picture. And the composition is simple, but nice. Love it, love it, love it. I was this close, honestly, to making this my favorite picture of the year, just because it came from nothing. I mean, I traveled a long way to come down to photograph the lighthouse. I've had it on my to-do list for a couple of years. I missed out last year because I knew it was either too early or too late and I just didn't have the timing right to go down when the crop was right in the field. And when I got there, just, you know, all the conditions were just so right. In third place, Harris and Lewis took me bloody hours to get here because I had a, a rough sketch of where it was and my Google Maps was sending me all over the place and I walked past it twice and eventually found it and then I had to wait hours for the light to drop and the conditions weren't particularly perfect. I wanted some wavy, smashy, crashy, wavy stuff, but it was flat calm and that was the best I could manage. But, but with that flat sea and that sun just dropping down onto the horizon, I just thought, wow, beautiful. Harris and Lewis, wonderful. In second place, I mean, I've, that's got to be up there just because of its simplicity. Just because of its simplicity. And again, my style of fine art photography, lots more of this to come this year. But that nearly made my top spot. And the only reason this image was picked by this image is simply because of the story attached to me photographing this particular image. And what I love about this more than anything is that this is a very common location. Thousands and thousands and thousands of photographers every year visit um, the Holy Island, Lindisfarne, and everybody, nearly everybody, I'm not saying I'm the only person to photograph it, but nearly everybody will drive past it. That includes me over the years. I've driven past it and I've often thought, I wonder what it would be like to photograph that on, the, on an incoming tide. And I just... I made the effort to go and find out. And so for me, because of the style of picture, 
and because of the story attached to it I was pretty scared while I was taking this picture believe it or not I was pretty scared because that tide comes in super quick but I did get lucky I must admit but mm, yeah I took a few a few pictures that I really like but I particularly like this one so there you go who knows if I can beat any of those images in 2024 I'm certainly going to try and beat them I'm starting off with a road trip up to Scotland in five or six days time from now I've got a small road trip down to Wales this month as well whereby I'm going to try and beat my favorite or better should I say my favorite landscape picture of all times using the Nikon gear I'm not sure which is going to come first the road trip to Scotland or the road trip to Wales and yeah I've got so much planned for this year so do me a favor help support the channel and give this video a thumbs up and if you're new here and you want to find your way back then consider subscribing as well but for everybody who's followed me not only for 2023 but for the years prior thank you so much it means so much to me for anybody that's interested in the workshops all the links are below and I do run a lot of them and most of them are sold out I've got to tell you and everybody who comes on them um, has nothing but nice things to say so as far as I'm concerned that's brilliant plus I, I love meeting you guys out and about if you do see me out and about by the way this year stop me and say hello so until the next video guys it's probably too late now to wish you a happy new year but I'm going to anyway so let's all collectively have a great year together 2024 I am so looking forward to it cheers